baby. We gotta win this one. Out the jump, let's go. Let's go, man, let's go. Here we go. This is about to be a lit day today. Hey, let's get back to our swagger, come on. All of them get the dough down. They get the dough down. Okay, meet at the quarterback. Welcome inside the TCO studios for another edition of the Audible presented by 3M. I'm Gabe Henderson. That is Tatum Everett. We are back after a week off and we bring in the two big fellas on the offensive line. They're joining us tonight, Mr. Garrett Bradbury and Mr. Ezra Cle Cleveland. Uh, fellas, thank you for joining us. Uh, first and foremost, Ezra, it's your first time. Let's give yeah, it up. First time <laughs> in the TCO studios, <laughs> your third year with the Vikings, man. Welcome. Thanks. You yeah. know, COVID baby, I, I haven't seen most of the facility, so. Man. Can't avoid us forever. Yeah. <laughs> one, one thing you can't avoid is the, the camera capturing you in the locker room after Dalvin Cook uh, received a game ball last yeah. week. Um, <laughs> Dalvin got the ball in the locker room, and he initially, he, afterwards, he gave it to you, Garrett. Yeah. And then you tried to give it to Ezra, and Ezra's like, dude, <laughs> walk left. us through that moment. <laughs> why, why didn't you, neither one of you want the ball? I think it's just part of O-line. You don't really want to be in the spotlight at all. Sure. Ken why Ezra <laughs> has not been in the studios. <laughs> um, but no, that was, that was cool of Dalvin to do that. Uh, but he definitely earned the game ball. He's... Yeah. He ran great last Sunday, so uh, that's just kind of part of us. Just yeah. kind of, we'll stay out of the spotlight. I mean, he can't do it without without you guys. And right, right. It, it's another opportunity for him to, you know, give you guys credit. But at the same time, I, I've, I've always wanted to know, what do you do with those game balls? Um, I have mine just like in my mantle, like in my okay. living room. Okay. Um, normally they get painted on like the score and stuff, mm -hmm. and okay. like the date and who we played. It's cool. It's cool. It's something that, because in college you kind of just get them printed on, but they're hand painted here and. Um, usually they're big wins. Uh, I think the whole team got one week one against the Packers. And those, like, it's the games that you kind of remember forever. So you can kind of hang them like, I don't know, in your man cave, in your basement, or, and just kind of remember like those good times you had. Nice. At least the ones that you accept, right? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, <laughs> for sure. Well, uh, one thing Vikings fans will accept is uh, this hot, the way we start this show off. We start this thing off with uh, a game called Two Truths and a Lie. Uh, both of you guys got cue cards in front of you. Ezra, we're going to start with you. You'll flip your card <clears> over, <throat> read it to our radio audience, and Garrett, it's up to you to figure out which two sentences are true and which one is a lie. All right. On Can you, Ezra. Don't show me. My parents named me after the Supercross star Ezra Lusk. Uh, before playing football, I had aspirations of making and selling pottery. <laughs> I was roommates with Viking offensive tackle Blake Brandle during the NFL draft process. Ooh. So I can kind of believe the pottery one a little bit. Ezra has an obsession with Legos. Um, <laughs> so I can kind of believe that one. And I think the lie is that he was roommates with Blake Brandle. I think he was roommates with John Mulshawn, his college teammate. Uh, yeah, that is true. Oh. Um, Weren't you oh, roommates bang. with James Lynch too? Uh, yeah, okay. I was. I think he's talking about the combine. Okay. I was roommates uh, with my left guard and in college. Lynch, yeah. And then, yeah, I was roommates with James Lynch, uh, my whole So the pottery year. one's true. Yeah. That's awesome. It's true. <laughs> right. I eventually want to uh, build a shed in my backyard and like get a pottery wheel and a kiln and stuff and make my own pottery. And Legos. And Legos. And more Legos. Yep. It's really cool. How did nice. you get into it? Um, in high school, um, I kind of, we could take like a fun class and mm. I took pottery the first year. I didn't, I liked it, but I didn't really try hard. <laughs> yeah. And then the, really? next, the next two <laughs> years, uh, I took it more serious and every day I got on the pottery wheel and was like making pots and stuff. It was fun. Dang, that's really that's, cool. Yeah. You're, you're really good with your hands, clearly, <laughs> to do something like I that. And, uh, <laughs> and anyways, uh, Ezra Lusk, your, your dad named yep. you after the, the sport. I guess the supercross racer. Uh, yep. Are there any stories with that? So you I ever mean, got hurt or anything? Um, my dad's just really into like motorcycles and stuff. He's okay. still doing it to this day. Um, he still sends me pictures of his dirt bikes and stuff. And uh, I did it when I was little. Okay. I started. I started on a four wheeler when I was three years old. Got my first first bike when I was five for my fifth birthday, and did it all the way until probably 16, 17, and I stopped to pursue oh, wow. football. Mm. So. That, that is true, the Ezra Lush thing. Wow, that's, uh, that's impressive. Yeah. Um, I feel like it, it takes, all, all those things make up the person. And to have you know, multiple layers of you, I think that allows other people to get to know who you are off the field. Yeah. How did you find out he liked Lego so much? <laughs> um, we do a gift <laughs> exchange in the O-line room. Okay. And I got him um, a Star Wars Lego piece last year that was 7,000 pieces or something like that. Yes. 
Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Because I know he loves them. He's a Lego member. If that's a, that's Is a that thing. A thing? That's a thing? VIP member. He's a VIP member. It's not that hard um, to get into. You just sign up for it. <laughs> your email is. It's not that crazy. What's and so the, as a VIP member, what do you get? So you uh, give him your card when you yeah. check out and you get points and then you can get like, you can uh, Get like five dollars off, ten dollars off, hundred dollars off. Wow! So it's, has, a reward, it's a reward system. Yep. Okay. He has multiple fifty-pound Lego pieces, like wow. full battleships and Death Stars, and the booklet to build a Lego. You know, it's like a few pages. Mm -hmm. Step one, it's like a textbook. Yeah. For the <laughs> I mean, it's like four hundred pages. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a spiral notebook. It's impressive. He <laughs> claims he's a master builder, whatever that means. So, I mean, so, he, he does pottery and he builds Legos. I mean, so many layers. And, yep. and he's been sitting here for three years without coming in the studio. No, but, now now everyone knows. Been invited. <laughs> now everyone knows. There's more layers to him too. Didn't we'll he, find out more. My last question for you before we get to uh, Garrett's two truths and a lie. Didn't you build a Lego piece right before you got drafted? Wasn't that, is that the same with the, the Falcon one that you were talking about? Yeah, so when COVID started, we were kind of stuck in the house and my roommate uh, started building le his old Legos. There was all in a bin. He had all these booklets, we started building them. It was really fun. So we went out and bought them and I mean, wasted our time building Legos instead of, you know, getting sick with COVID, so. There you go. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, loud and clear. Garrett on you. All right, Ezra. We just right, had a five minute You kind of read half of it I'm first. Yeah, it's my it. fault. <clears throat> I received a football scholarship from NC State after a batting practice in high school. Okay. I finished the 2021 season for the Vikings as second on the team in yards per catch. And I played baseball and football for my first two years at NC State before fully committing to football. I think it's the third one. The third one? It is the third one. Yes. I did not play baseball. <laughs> we both do have a love for baseball that yeah. we share. Um, but I did not play in college. Although the yards per catch one did get me. <laughs> on uh, the second I one. finished second, yeah. Yeah. Oh, second. Yeah, yeah I got 21 it. I yards. Didn't know it was impressive. No. Thanks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> was he was juiced for me. I was that play. <laughs> if you see the film, he sprints after me and tries really? to tackle me after. It was, <laughs> it was funny. Yeah, it was awesome. The, the batting practice, the scholarship offer, can you explain that for Vikings fans? Yeah, it was kind of wild. The, uh, NC State, they were recruiting me. Um, they liked me, hadn't offered me a scholarship yet. And they kind of just wanted to see me move around, run. Uh, and so the tight end coach, because I was a tight end at the time, came to my batting practice, came to baseball practice and saw me like run the bases, take ground balls, hit, and then the next day coach called and offered me a scholarship. So I guess something I did on the baseball field helped. <laughs> um, but that was kind of a wild way to get an offer, but I'm glad I did. And you guys still talk about baseball? Oh yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. Geek out about all the numbers and stuff. Ever do fantasy baseball? No, no. Probably don't have the time. No. <laughs> <laughs> but more just like dreaming when we're in practice, like how sick would it be to <laughs> just like hit on field BP right now or take some ground balls. As you played center field in high school, right? Yeah. Baseball, and then you played catcher, right? Yeah. Does base is are there maybe I'm forcing this question, but are there any <laughs> correlations between what you guys did as baseball players to offensive linemen? I mean, I mean, I think it's good to play multiple sports. Yeah. I think that you kind of become more of an athlete because Watching some offensive linemen play catch pre-practice, <laughs> it's a little different. <laughs> Ezra's a good athlete and he can uh, throw it and catch it and some guys uh, aren't the best. So I think that we kind of look like more better athletes, I'd say. Yeah, when I played center field, I was also 80 pounds lighter, so. Can move a little better. Yeah. <laughs> I would imagine that changes things a little bit. Yeah. That's great though. I think it's really fun when you talk about the way that Ezra celebrated your 21 yard catch. Yeah in 21 by sprinting after you. It feels like your room is so tight knit that the celebrations are not just for your accomplishments for each other. How did, has it been like that since the beginning, Garrett? Yeah, it's kind of the nature of the position we play. Um, you know, we're not scoring touchdowns. We're not the face of all the highlights, mm -hmm. but um, that's just kind of alignment. I don't know. You just kind of celebrate, you, you do a little part for the team and then you celebrate whoever makes the big play. Uh, and we're around each other all the time. Like, we know everything about, I mean, we could have done 100 of these. I think we all would have got them. Um, but we have a good time. We're all great friends, and all of our wives and girlfriends are great friends. And it's just, it's a good room to be part of. You, you guys have both played, you know, multiple positions on the offensive line. I think one of, Ezra, you played defensive line in high school also? Yeah. When they, and you did also, right, yeah. Garrett? Like, what, I guess, what, what kind of chemistry does that build when you're trying to get over that learning curve together of learning a new position? Yeah, I think, so like when I first came in here, I was a right guard and, uh, you know, the year later I was a left guard and people think it's really easy to switch sides and stuff. I think that 
correlates with all positions. I mean, people probably think it's a lot easier to switch positions than it really is. Um, the right side is completely different. Like in the huddle, the eight, like evens are to the right, odds to the left. Like you got to switch that in your mind when you're on different sides. And uh, it's just like you just got to think a lot more in the huddle, uh, depending on the huddle, uh, sides you're on, and it, it just makes it a lot more difficult. Yeah, just I think the coachability aspect of it, just being able to take coaching, whether you're a D lineman or whatever, right guard, left tackle, and just being able to hear coaching and, and understand what works and, and get better like, as the plays go on. It's obviously, like you said, you really have to think hard. It's a mental game at the end of it. I'm going to throw a, a fun question. Might, not get, might get you in a little bit of trouble, may not. Mm. Who do you think is the most intelligent guy in the offensive line room? I would say Blake, Blake yeah. Randall. He, uh, he watches all his game shows like <laughs> off to the side and stuff. I remember yeah. I lived with him in Arizona for a little bit. Every night we'd watch Jeopardy at night and he would just be rattling off questions and be like, I don't know how you know these. <laughs> Brett Jones, he's not here anymore. Oh, but yeah. Brett Jones is yeah. like, he's a wizard. He's yeah. an absolute wizard. In the room now, um, hmm. I just think about the Legos. It makes me feel like you'd be able yeah, to like solve there, Yeah, there's not one that sticks out, but like in terms of like cars and like stuff like that, I'd go Ezra. Everyone kind of has their own little yeah. thing that they like. Um, so I don't know if there's one person that I love can... that. You guys all have your strengths. Yeah. That's yeah. great. We're better yeah. together. Legos better. are a lot easier than you think. It's just following rules, like the instruction panel. I, just I don't have you. the patience. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate you saying that, but I just don't have it. <laughs> well, well, speaking of patience, this holiday season is upon us, and if you want to make a difference in someone's life, text SKOL to 24365 and donate $25 to register, to volunteer, or give online at SalvationArmyNorth.org slash Vikings. We'll be back more. We'll be back with more of the Audible presented by 3M with Garrett Bradbury and Ezra Cleveland. We are back. This is the Audible presented by 3M. That's Tatum Everett. That's Ezra Cleveland. That's Garrett Bradbury. My name is Gabe Henderson. And uh, fellas, we were talking a little football before we went to the break. And uh, I know you guys don't like the credit. Dalvin Cook doesn't like the credit being the running back. It's kind of like, no, you get it, you get it, you get it. But Dalvin Cook right now is 141 yards from becoming the third leading rusher in franchise history. Wow. What would it mean for you guys to be able to get that, give that to him this upcoming Sunday? Yeah, I mean, it's to just to be a small part in that. Yeah. Um, he's one of the best teammates I've ever had. I'm not kidding. I tell that to everyone that asks about him. He just, he loves the game. He loves his teammates. He loves to play football. Um, that energy and passion it's contagious you know when we're all going in there for a Wednesday or Thursday practice and some of us might not be feeling it but he brings the juice um, and he's definitely he's a leader of this team he's like the heartbeat of the team and the success he has like there's no surprise to anyone he's the best back in football in my opinion and it's awesome to be his teammate on top of a milestone like that, there's the potential to clinch the division mm -hmm. on Sunday. Uh, something that hasn't really been on the table for you guys right now. You could get it on Sunday and it's, you know, games left in the season to go. What would it mean to you on a personal level, Ezra? On a personal level, uh, I mean, we've been working hard. Since I've been here, this mm -hmm. is the first season I've been over 500 um, record-wise. And we've kind of just been rattling off wins and stuff. I don't really know what it means yet to get to the playoffs. I heard Garrett talking about the win his rookie year and how like it meant a lot to him and I haven't been there yet so it'd be really cool to be able to like clinch that mm -hmm. and be able to exp like 100% experience uh, a playoff uh, game. So true. Man, the, and and that starts with you know you guys up front and then, you know kind of just trickles to everybody on this team but Kirk Cousins being the the leader the captain of this team when I, I know the ultimate goal is protect Kirk like yeah. we want to keep him upright. But when you see your starting quarterback pull the ball down and truck over a, a, a <laughs> linebacker or, you know, 19-yard touchdown run, what, what, what does that provide to your group? Those are my favorite plays. Yeah. <laughs> Kirk's a dual threat. People just don't realize it. That's right. People That's don't right. realize it. No, he can, he can run. He can scramble. Yeah. Um, I think the 17-yard touchdown run he had earlier this year. It's an empty backfield on third down. Arizona rushes four. Kirk steps up, sprints out to the right, turns it 15-10. That's Arizona, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, he's awesome. It was like 19 yeah. miles per hour, wasn't it? It was. Who, speaking of, who's the fastest offensive lineman in? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a topic in the, of in the room. Uh, in the room. In the room. Is it Brian? I, it's, it's Unfortunately, it's Brian. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's okay. Brian. Okay. okay. He had a really fast 40 time at the combine, I think. He yeah. went like a 4.8. Yeah. Four, eight. yeah. Um, I mean, fast. You had a fast time at the 40. Yeah. <laughs> You're a little faster. All right, I wrote this down. <laughs> Darisaw ran a 4.9. Ezra ran a 4.9. Gary, you ran a 4.9. Ed Ingram, 5 flat. Brian O'Neill, 4.8. <laughs> So just mm. Brian's such a okay. beast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I want to take you back to the Buffalo game. There was a play on one of the final drives when you guys were making the comeback. It was fourth and sixth, mm -hmm. fourth quarter. You were free blocking. Garrett had a guy, <laughs> and you just came. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> came over and just uh. pancaked a guy. I, I mean, when he when you see something like that happen in front of you, you're just like my guy, like. What are the emotions like? Yeah, I'm juiced up. I mean, I was blocking the guy, and then he disappeared from my hands. <laughs> it was wild. And I actually have a bet with Ezra, because he's him and Ed are both so good at cleaning out, like, D linemen, mm -hmm. that for every cleanup he gets, he gets a free Philly cheesesteak from me. Oh, wow. So Dominic's Pizza okay. in Inver free Grove, uh, best cheesesteaks in the Twin Cities. And Ezra gets a free one every time he gets to, does that for me. Wow. And, and, and the thing is, it worked out great, and uh, everybody gets fed at that point. I mean, you might as well just continue to get... Is it, like, one per, like, pancake? Like yeah, yeah. So you can get two and get two cheese sticks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, might as well make it three on Sunday. I'm actually just learning that. Oh, so I was just, I was saying, what is... Like, well, you've what never is had more than one in a game. On me. On me. Oh, okay. What is it about the cheese steak? Is this, like, your favorite? It's the uh, best. Yeah. But, okay, I just was... It's the best cheese steak. We kind of we go there every Tuesday, oh, and... Uh, you know, when I don't have to pay for it, it makes it taste a little better. <laughs> yeah, mm. it does. Food is always good when it's free. Yeah. Um, I want to. I got to ask this question though, because I, that moment when you watch it on film, um, you were blocking. You were set blocking to your left, and then Blake Brandle touched your shoulder pad, and then you went right. What is that? Another example of like nonverbal communication? And if so, what does that look like for an offensive line? So during the moment, he actually said go, like as he was touching me. So okay. I didn't feel his, his hand touch me. Okay. Just to just clarify that. But, okay. uh, so very much <laughs> verbal <laughs> communication. Yeah. So what is verbal now, Doug? <laughs> I mean, it's just a big thing. I mean, my guy's looping out, his guy drops, and I can co go help Garrett. We always harp on, you know, team protection. And if, if anything goes wrong, if you're physical enough, then uh, it could clean up the pocket or possibly make a lane for Kirk to run, like we were talking about. And it's, it just makes the protection. I talked to TJ Hawkinson earlier today, and I was asking him, like, you know, your first game that you celebrated, like a win, was the shirtless Kirko chains plane ride. You must have thought, like, what did I just join? <laughs> He's like, no, it was the best moment of my time. I was like, well, what happens if you, you know, you guys win, you come home on the plane? Like, what's it going to take to get you to do the now ritual celebration. So I want to know, Ezra, what would it take for mm. you oh, no. to do that one time coming home? Uh, like, what do you think that involves? I mean, maybe if I have a play like Garrett had last year at Green Bay. <laughs> okay. But okay. instead of 21, like maybe 25 yards and a touchdown. Okay. Mm. Okay. That'd be cool. I would, I'd for sure do you it. You would do I it? I don't think Ezra would ever do it. <laughs> I don't care how good of game he plays. When we get on the plane, we're all having a good time after wins, playing music, playing cards. And Ezra is like, I can't wait for everyone to sit down and be quiet. <laughs> he just puts his headphones on, watches a movie. So I don't Ooh. see Ezra ever doing that, even if he scores a touchdown. What about you? Absolutely. Yeah, I'll do, yeah. I'll do it. Okay. If we just win and the boys play yeah. good If up we front. just win. Garrett would do it if we just won. <laughs> yeah, for just sure. Won. If yeah. he, he got hand of the chains, he would for sure do it. I've worn some chains. Okay. They're heavy. Yeah. Kirk, not enough credit to Kirk. Not it's, yeah. it takes a lot of neck strength. It's, <laughs> I think he was on injury report chains. with a neck injury. Yeah. Like the Hopefully not. I mean, that's what Hopefully TJ not. said. He's like, I don't think jokes. I can handle all of that. I was like, I don't know. You're a big dude. I don't need all the cameras in front of me, but I'll wear the chains. How, <laughs> yeah. How, how would you I describe don't. this moment, like this, this season, right? Like certain people have used the word magical. Certain people have used the word unbelievable. <clears throat> At 10 and 2, how would you describe this season thus far? It's kind of hard to <clears throat> step back from the season while you're in it and yeah. like, think about it because you're just kind of week to week. I mean, it's just, that's the NFL. It's a long season. It's a grind and winning in the NFL is hard. Like it's, this is my fourth year. This is third year. Um, last two years, we haven't won a lot. You know, we've been below 500. And so I'm just taking it one week at a time. And then at the end of the season, hopefully we accomplish our goals and we can look back. But there's just like a different level of trust on the sideline. There's a different level of confidence um, that we're just, Whoever needs to step up, whether it's offense, defense, or special teams, a play is going to be made. Um, and it keeps happening. Hopefully it keeps happening. 
Hopefully, we can win the games kind of by the third quarter pretty soon <laughs> here. But whatever it takes. I mean, yeah. that's that's the NFL. That's the mindset you have to have. And that's kind of where everyone's at. And we're just we're taking it one, one day, one week at a time. How much of this feels like unfinished right now, even though you're at 10 and 2? Yeah, I mean, we're at 10 and 2. But, I mean, we still have four games left. Um, four games left in the ring. Five is 17, that's right. That's okay. My fault. Okay. Okay. Five okay. games left in the regular season, and then you have the postseason after that. So, I mean, we're just taking it one week at a time and focusing on the game in front of us and taking it one step at a time. That's a good point, and um, you, you can definitely tell that it's, it's a week-by-week -week job. And just I was looking at some of the stats from, you know, this year compared to last year. Last year, at the end of the season, we led – we were second in the NFL in holding penalties as an offensive line. This year, we have the least amount of holding penalties. What do you attribute that that shift to? It's a lot of things. You know, it's <clears> – I think Coach Cooper emphasizes this team protection. You know, there's probably four rushers rushing at one time, and so can we help out other guys? And Kirk's doing a great job getting the ball out. Receivers are getting open. You know, I don't think there's any one thing. Um, but I feel like we're in a pretty good groove up front, yeah. playing physical, playing hard. Because um, your technique might fail you sometimes in pass pro, but we always say, like, Effort can, can win the job for you. Effort can get it done. So I think all five guys across the board, even Blake, who's done some great things, um, I have the trust that every one of those guys is going to give everything they have, every rep, uh, and finish. Because it might not look pretty at first, but if you out-effort the guy, you can get the job done. So that's just kind of the, the mindset I feel like we have. Yeah. Also, can we get some Pro Bowl votes for these guys right now? We got the fifth, fifth most Hashtag. votes, tenth most votes for you two at your respective positions. It's going to be pretty cool to feel like you're getting the respect. Yeah, for sure. Um, that was something that Garrett and I talked about in the room. Uh, we're, uh, we uh, worked under the radar, but um, it's fun to have people talk. Like, I've been talked to more in this building this year than I have my last two years, and it's just fun to get to know everyone and talk with them and, you know, earn your respect like you were saying. For sure. Yeah, go vote for these guys. Hashtag Pro Bowl vote Garrett Bradbury. Hashtag Pro Bowl vote Ezra <laughs> Cleveland. Shoot, hashtag Pro Bowl vote this entire Vikings roster. Seriously. You know, CD, CD, right? Everybody. Everybody. Everyone. Uh, well, look, um, we'll, we'll get out with that because this has been another great episode of the show. Garrett, Ezra, appreciate you guys joining the show. Uh, for Tatum, everybody else behind the camera on this phenomenal Vikings Entertainment Network crew. My name is Gabe Henderson. Thank you again for tuning into another edition of the Audible presented by 3M.